Hello Space Cats, it's me Jules with a story this week Think the police have come to dig up that body next door The story this week is about a naughty little imp Actually, when you listen to this story, you'll see that this poor young woman was put in a completely impossible situation by three different people. You wouldn't get away with that sort of thing these days, at least not without a sound drubbing on social media. Back many years ago, there was a miller who lived in a village on the outskirts of a kingdom. To make himself feel more important, he bragged to the king that his daughter could spin straw into gold. Once the words were out of his mouth, he cursed himself for saying it, but it was too late. The king called for the girl and locked her up in one of his castle's turrets. It was full of straw and he demanded that she spin it all into gold. If you don't do as I say, he said, I shall have you killed. I'll be back in the morning. The girl was terrified. How on earth would she make this spiky straw into gold? Just as she was about to give up all hope, a little imp-like man appeared, seemingly from nowhere. When the girl told him what had happened, he agreed to spin the straw in return for her necklace. She was so relieved. She was very happy to hand it over. The next morning, the king was delighted. He was so happy that he showed the girl a larger room filled with straw and guess what? Demanded that she spun gold there too. The girl felt very bleak but the imp appeared again and he said he'd spin the straw into gold in return for her ring. The following morning the king was super happy, but there was one last room. It was vast, the size of a barn, full from top to bottom with straw. The girl could see what was coming. Spin this straw to gold or I will execute you at dawn. However, if you manage it, I will marry you and you will be rich forever. Well, I think that's what you'd call Hobson's choice. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. After the king had left, the imp appeared, but the girl had nothing left to barter with. I have an idea said the imp. He lived on his own and he was very lonely. He longed for a child of his own. I will save your life if you give me your firstborn child, he said. Again, the girl felt she had very little choice. She agreed, only wondering if she could survive the next day. The king was delighted with the huge barn full of gold the next morning. True to his word, he married the young woman. Lucky her. The following year she gave birth to a child and, like many mothers do, fell in love with the little one. Not long after, the imp returned to claim his payment. The miller's daughter was now a queen and a very rich woman and she offered him all of her jewels, crowns, gold and castles, but he was not interested. It was the child he wanted. The 
the imp liked a game, so he agreed to give up his claim to the child if she can guess his name within three days. So the Queen guessed many names. Robert? Brian? Clive? No, no, no! Alfred? No! James? No! She thought of as many boys' names as she could, but none were right. On the eve of the third day, she was desperate. She didn't want to hand over her precious child to this little sprite, never to be seen again. She went for a walk in the forest behind the castle to clear her mind. It was dusk and deep in the forest she came across a little house with smoke puffing out of the chimney. The curtains were open a little and the firelight inside showed the silhouette of the imp dancing around in a state of euphoria like a fruitcake singing to himself. She watched as he sang. Tonight, tonight, my plans I make. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the baby I take. The queen will never win the game, for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Rumpelstiltskin is my name. She repeated it to herself as she scampered back to the castle, making sure she wouldn't forget. The next morning, the imp appeared in her chambers in a state of fevered delirium at his excitement. So, he chirped. Is it Oliver? No, he rejoiced. What about Arthur? No, 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 he responded. Oh, well, there is only one other thing your name could be, said the Queen. Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin's face fell. It must be a trick. No trick, said the Queen. I just couldn't think of anything else. Rumpelstiltskin was furious. He had been outmanoeuvred. There are a few different endings to this story. In one, he loses his temper and runs out angrily, never to return. In another, he stamped his foot into the ground so hard, he created a chasm and fell into it. But this is what I think happened. Having had her life dominated by uncaring and inconsiderate people, the Queen sent the imp back off to his home with a flea in his ear. By stealth, she managed to keep the King out of the kingdom on trips to find gold as far and as wide as she could think of. And as for her father, well, she welcomed him into the castle for tea and scones and taught him how to think before he spoke in future. Hey folks, if you are as excited about books and art as I am, then you might be interested in these courses that will teach you what I know. Make a picture book step by step will help you go about writing, illustrating and publishing your own picture book. It's a comprehensive course starting with making your key decisions and takes you all the way to making your print ready copy. Do you need to know how to draw children or dragons or sea creatures? These shorter classes will help you do just that pop over to my website and see what's on offer. Go on, give it a go. Another Grimm's brother fairy tale. Well, they really do live up to their name, don't they? Grimm, that is.
Next week I will be looking at how to find the right name for your character, so if you're midway through writing something that might be a pertinent video to watch. I'm off to Weaver Weevil, I will see you next week. Nano Nano.